Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order and welcome you to the regular meeting of the Milwaukee Planning Commission. Agendas and additional copies of staff reports are available on the table in the hall. If you have not picked up an agenda, please do so. It contains important information about the process. If you wish to be included in the mailing list for a decision, please add your name and contact information to the sign-up list located on the table in the hallway. If you wish to testify, please also fill out a yellow comment card. We will follow the basic format listed on the back of the agenda. It includes all the hearing procedure steps. We may vary from the process based on the specific minutes of each hearing. So we don't have any meeting minutes to approve today. Um, are there informational items from staff? The one thing I wanted to mention was next Tuesday evening, May 21st, um, the council has scheduled a joint meeting with the Planning Commission, so hopefully you will be able to come um, at about 7 o'clock here um, to discuss the draft housing policies. We're, we've been trying to accelerate that discussion slightly, um, so it would be good to get both commission and um, council input before we go back to the Comp Plan Advisory Committee two days later. So we're, um, we've been asked by the, the city manager to try to wrap up the policy element by the end of November. So it's making it, um, gonna make it a little intense. Um, so then we still have the block three policies to take on after that. So this one is just gonna be a discussion about the, um, uh, the housing policies. So, Hopefully you can make it. And I know a couple of and I know a couple of you have um, conflicts. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is audience participation. This is an opportunity to comment on any on any items that are not on the agenda for tonight. If you wish to comment on an item that is on the agenda, there will be time for comments after the presentation. So anyone here who wishes to comment on something that is not on the agenda tonight? So with that, we'll move on to the public hearings. Um, so next on the agenda is a public hearing on the conditional use for radiant yoga. The hearing is called to order. The purpose of this hearing is to consider application number CU-2019-001. The purpose of the application is to request a conditional use for the property located at 4000 Southeast International Way, Suite F202. The applicant has the burden of proving that the application is consistent with the City of Milwaukee's Zoning Subdivision Ordinance, Comprehensive Plan, and any mun applicable municipal <laughs> code provision. <clears throat> The applicant has the burden of proving that the proposal conforms with all of the city's applicable criteria. I now ask staff to cite the zoning ordinance section where the criteria can be found. Uh, from Milwaukee Municipal Code section 19.310, business industrial zone, section 19.905, conditional uses, and section 19.1006, type three review. Thank you. All testimony and evidence must be directed towards the applicable substantive criteria. Failure to address a criterion or raise an issue with sufficient detail to allow the Planning Commission an adequate opportunity to respond to each issue precludes appeal to the City Council based on that issue. Failure to raise constitutional or other issues related to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient detail to allow a response precludes an action for damages in Circuit Court. Any party withstanding may appeal the decision of the Planning Commission to the City Council. Persons with standing are those who submit written comments or testify in person or sign the Planning Commission attendance sign-up sheet in the hallway. I will rec recognize those persons who have completed the testimony cards and given them to me. When you come to the podium, please state your name and address for the record so they may be entered into the minutes. So anybody who wishes to testify um, would need to fill out one of those cards and route them, route them to me through, through Denny there other than the, the applicant who does get to testify without a card. Um, I will recognize, yada yada, when you come to the podium, please state your name and address for the record so they may be entered into the minutes. If you are here to testify, please remember to confine your remarks to the application and the relevant criteria and to avoid repetition and irrelevant information. If additional documents or evidence are provided by any party, the commission may, if requested, allow a continuance or leave the record open to allow the parties a reasonable opportunity to respond. 
any such continuance or extension shall be subject to the limitations of the 120 day rule unless the continuance or extension is requested or agreed to by the applicant. Does any member of the Planning Commission wish to abstain from this hearing? No. 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 Does any member of the Planning Commission wish to declare an actual or potential conflict of interest? No. 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 Does any member of the Planning Commission wish to report on any ex parte contacts? No. 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 Will any commissioner who has visited the site prior to this hearing please raise their hand? Hey, good work. Do any of those commissioners who visited the site speak to anyone at the site or note anything different from what is indicated in the staff report for this application? No. no. And does any member of the audience wish to challenge the participation of any member of the Planning Commission? And does any member of the audience wish to challenge the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission to hear this matter? Well, then let's proceed to the staff presentation. Good evening, commissioners, including a special Hi, welcome to uh, Lauren Loosefeld, who I've worked with before as the chair of the DLC, now recently joined the Planning Commission. Uh, my name is Brett Calver. I'm an associate planner with the city, and I'll be walking you through this, this application tonight for the conditional use request for Radiant Yoga. So just uh, a, a few items kind of related to what the information presented in the staff report, a, a brief list of some of the, the different aspects of this business. Uh, the, the overall operation has a number of different uh, components to it. It does serve as kind of a base of operations, a professional office for Radiant Yoga. Uh, there are some kind of production aspects in terms of the video uh, work that they do. Uh, and it essentially serves as a headquarters for the business. In addition, the yoga classes and in some of the aspects of the different workshops that are offered, I think in part because of some of the physical aspect of it, um, we think are better understood as a form of indoor recreation um, in the context of zoning. Um, so they're kind of more like a health club or a spa, uh, certainly than a gymnasium. Um, and I understand that um, from from the discussions I've had with the applicant and applicant's representatives that, that um, they certainly think it's different from a typical um, yoga studio where they're only you know only or kind of exclusively classes that are happening um, they're presenting a much more holistic uh, philosophical kind of multifaceted approach to the building but um, the the aspect of the yoga classes in particular was one that uh, we we understood and interpreted to need conditional use review for um, being located in the business industrial zone So just a quick overview of the, the location. Um, this, this is uh, on a site that's comprised of, um, it's a business park with two tax lots, a total of six separate buildings that have space for over 60 tenants and, uh, and by my count, at, at least 300 off-street parking spaces. So there's a variety of uses um, within our larger business industrial zone and in particular in this business park you know, for everything from you know, insurance providers, uh, different health care providers, chiropractors, um, uh, basis of operation for contractors and whatnot, and that is precisely the, the point or the purpose of the business industrial zone is to provide a space for these different types of uses. And so just showing that's the, the zoning context, it's kind of within the, the larger portion of our overall business industrial zone. Um, from the Google Street View, this uh, the, the actual site or the project areas with, within this one particular building, Building F, it's on the second floor, one of the tenant spaces there, it's about just a little over 1,100 square feet. And I would say that it's not, it's not a given that um, the, the uses that are listed as conditional uses in the BI zone would be approved. At the same time, there's a very specific list of the types of things that can be approved as conditional uses. And I think the idea is that there should be uh, some consideration for each of those particulars uh, just to make sure that any impacts or the scale um, and nature of the operation will in fact fit in the particular site where they're proposed. And so with that in mind, you know, there is uh, a list of 
of approval criteria for conditional uses in general. I've highlighted the couple uh, from this list of seven that I thought were more relevant to this. So kind of thinking about the the characteristic or nature of this proposed um, business, in particular the yoga classes aspect, and thinking about compatibility with other uses, thinking about any impacts that uh, that having the classes at that location might have, and whether there is any mitigation that could be provided for any impacts. And then just in, in this case, it was interesting to consider some of the, the city's comprehensive plan policies, in particular, whether there's one related to economic development and the idea of trying to um, encourage the retention and expansion of existing existing businesses, especially with an eye to opportunities for generating more employment. Uh, and in this case, uh, that's one of the, that my understanding is one of the aspects of this business is providing uh, training and in some cases certification for other instructors and also providing a place where different yoga instructors can come and, and practice their craft at the, at the center. So in that respect, it seemed like it certainly fit in with that particular policy. In addition, the, the, the business industrial zone has a, its own kind of subset of approval criteria for those conditional uses that are listed. And again, I just highlighted a couple of the ones that seem most relevant, thinking about compatibility with uh, the scale uh, of other allowed uses in the area, and also thinking about it being uh, a needed service or product in the area. And I think, again, the, the framing of the, the overall business, especially with one of the, the their points of being trying to do outreach to other businesses and look for opportunities to provide yoga instruction for those other businesses at their sites. And it really seems to fit in as uh, something that both provides a, a service that employees within the district could use if they're available, but also um, doing the outreach to other businesses and kind of enhancing those businesses' operation. So with all that in mind, I guess the... If there was a key issue, the, the consideration that we had was just to, to wonder or think about, are there any impacts from allowing yoga classes uh, as part of the overall radiant yoga operation? Um, and our assessment was that given the kind of the, the proposed general schedule and scale of operations, so a few classes um, throughout the day, most days, including some at the lunch hour, some uh, after the five o'clock kind of peak traffic hour, it seemed that um, the, the proposal seemed to fit really well with um, the, the scale and nature of other operations in that. Uh, in the zone and so staff's assessment was that in some respects for this particular proposal going through this process is in some ways kind of a formality it seemed like a very good fit uh, perfectly in scale with uh, with the existing uh, operation there already and and that um, we're kind of moving through the process of just double checking to see if 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 we received any comments which we didn't from the larger community in terms of concerns and so given that there's a, a lot of off-street parking shared amongst these buildings um, kind of the general timing of the of the schedule that of classes that they're offering and the the number um, that it seemed like there were no impacts that we could think of that would need further mitigation. So in this case, the, our proposal um, or the, the materials that we provided to you just included findings for approval. In this case, no conditions of approval were deemed to be needed. So the staff's recommendation was for approval of this and um, obviously you have some other options if you, depending on um, your own deliberation, if you um, want to if you if you think there might be some impacts then and, and that they needed to be conditioned we we would take some direction about uh, those kinds of conditions uh, if you think you, you can't make a decision tonight we have time on the clock to allow for a continuance but with that i guess i'll keep it simple and ask if you have any questions any questions Not for me. okay thank you okay um, have we see, received any correspondence on this matter other than those included in the meeting packet? Uh, we have not. Okay. Um, then at this point, we'll take comments from the applicant or the representative. If you wanted to come forward and provide any comment, it's optional, but we'd love to hear from you if you have anything to share. Hi. Um, please uh, state your name and address for the record. Um, my name is Lauren Eisenberg, and um, my address is 4000 Southeast International Way. Um, I mean, what Brett said was pretty much, um, pretty much on point. I just want to explain that, um, Radiant Yoga is not Radiant Yoga Studio for a reason, because it's like the hub of, of my whole career and like 
what I'm trying to work with in the community, which is like provide, not only help people get their certification so that they can teach anywhere that they want. And those things happen, you know, those are weekend school type education classes and then they leave and go do their, um, you know, are able to teach wherever they want. And also I've had like a really good success with um, bringing yoga to the workplace and it's like a big passion of mine. It's such an incredible program. So I need like a central place and I picked that the business park because it is uh, it was such a good fit for me to be able to have a space to see like my private clients um, you know I see two three maybe four a day um, that's one on one you know and to be able to um, you know really be able to like hone my my craft and get these programs up and running in Milwaukee and it was like a decision to come to Milwaukee because there's not a lot of of this going on here but like in Portland where you know where I was it's like infiltrated and so I was like where could I go that would where I could be helpful <laughs> and you know try to start to connect and make um, you know connect the communities and do the work that I love to do which a lot of it is like not in my office um, but yeah so and then like the classes there's only a couple um, that schedule isn't really going to change. If anything, it might get a little smaller, and um, those are very limited in size, and it's very quiet. Um, it, it, we're still teaching, you know, to this, we're teaching a class. It's not really, I wouldn't say, recreation. Um, <coughs> yeah, so my hope is to get my business license so that I can really be a part of the community and, like, do, be of service is really what I hope. I don't know if you have any questions. Any questions for that, Lincoln? <laughs> Not for me. No. No, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we'll take uh, any testimony in support of the application. Um, do we have any yellow cards or anyone who wishes to speak in support of the application? I, I don't think so. I don't think we've taken in any. Okay. Um, in that case, then there's no one opposed to the application or neutral. So um, are there any members of the Planning Commission who have any questions regarding the testimony to this point? No. no. Nope. Um, there's no need for a staff rebuttal in this case. It was pretty simple. So um, the public testimony portion of this hearing on file CU 2019-001 is now closed. Uh, is the commission ready for discussion? Yes. 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 Okay, start over here. I have no issues. I have no issue. Commissioner Arco? No issues. I think this uh, sounds like a good opportunity. It seems like a good fit for the business industrial area. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, this is a, a good fit, and this process is a, a, a formality. Um, so I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, the conditional use for hearing file number CU-2019-001 um, uh, as recommended by staff. No no conditions. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, okay, so the, uh, <clears throat> the file C conditional use CU-2019-001 is approved with the recommended findings and no conditions. Um, if anyone wishes to appeal this decision to the city council, you must make applications stating the grounds within 15 days of the mailing of the notice of decision. Please see planning staff for details. So, easy peasy. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good Thank luck. You. Good, Good luck. luck. Thank you. I learned this from Greg. When you're done, you just do that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your desk clear. Focus on what's next. Uh, that was a good dramatic effect. <laughs> I bet Greg's watching. Hi, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> he probably That's is okay. watching. Or he's watching the Blazers game. That would be better. Actually, he'll he'll catch this. Little Don't say slide. anything, anybody. <laughs> I'm trying to record it anyway. Okay. So. <laughs> right. We'll see. Okay. <clears throat> so on to the the next hearing. Um, the, the 
public hearing on the Milwaukee High School parking lot is called to order. The purpose of this hearing is to consider application CSU-2019-002. The purpose of this application is to request a community service use on the property located at 2301 Southeast Willard Street. The applicant has the burden of proving that the application is consistent with the City of Milwaukee's zoning and subdivision ordinance, comprehensive plan, and any applicable municipal code provision. The applicant has the burden of proving that the proposal conforms with all of the city's applicable criteria. I now ask staff to cite the zoning ordinance sections where the criteria can be found. This list is a little bit longer than the last one, but okay. not as long as some. Uh, so from Milwaukee Municipal Code, Title 12, Streets, Sidewalks, and Public Places, Section 19.302, Medium and High Density Residential Zones, including the R2 Zone, Section 19.504, Site Design Standards, Chapter 19.600, Off-Street Parking and Loading, Chapter 19.700, Public Facility Improvements, Section 19.904, Community Service Uses, Section 19.911, Variance and section 19.1006 type 3 review thank you all testimony and evidence must be directed toward the applicable substantive criteria failure to address a criterion or raise an issue with sufficient detail to allow the Planning Commission an adequate opportunity to respond to each issue precludes appeal to the City Council based on that issue Failure to raise constitutional or other issues related to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient detail to allow a response precludes an action for damages in circuit court. Any party with standing may appeal the decision of the Planning Commission to the City Council. Persons with standing are those who submit written comments or testify in person or sign the Planning Commission attendance sign-up sheet in the hallway. I will recognize those persons who have completed the testimony cards and given them to me. When you come to the podium, please state your name and address for the record so they may be entered into the minutes. If you are here to testify, please remember to confine your remarks to the application and the relevant criteria and to avoid repetition and irrelevant information. If additional documents or evidence are provided by any party, the commission may, if requested, allow a continuance or leave the record open to allow the parties a reasonable opportunity to respond. Any such continuance or extension shall be subject to the limitations of the 120-day rule unless the continuance or extension is requested or agreed to by the applicant. Does any member of the Planning Commission wish to abstain from this hearing? No. 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 Does any member of the Planning Commission wish to declare an actual or potential conflict of interest? No. 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 Does any member of the Planning Commission wish to report on any ex parte contacts? No. 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 And will any commissioner who has visited the site prior to this hearing please raise their hand? Did any of those commissioners who visited the site speak to anyone at the site or note anything different from what is indicated in the staff report for this application? No. 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 Does any member of the audience wish to challenge the participation of any member of the Planning Commission? And does any member of the audience wish to challenge the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission to hear this matter? Let's proceed to the staff report. Evening again, commissioners. I'm still Brett Kelver, associate planner with the city of Milwaukee, and we'll walk you through this application. So this is a major modification to a community service use. Um, that is the the designation that the high school has. Uh, the larger campus is located in a primarily residential zone, and since we don't have a special zone for schools, it does have that CSU designation. And the uh, the changes that are proposed to the existing tennis courts do constitute a a major modification to that. So that's why we're here. Um, as you all know, I think from just being in Milwaukee the last couple of years, the, the, the campus is currently under construction uh, as part of a, a major uh, renovation or remodeling that um, the Planning Commission uh, reviewed and approved in uh, 2017. 2018, uh, key elements being complete replacement of the, the main uh, classroom building, um, kind of updating the uh, off-street parking area in the southwest corner of the site and, and converting the, the varsity softball field and the southeastern portion of the site into a parking lot. Uh, originally, uh, this 
conversion of the tennis courts to an off-street parking lot was intended to be part of that proposal. And along the way, some the, the, it was clear that there were some concerns by some of the neighbors, in particular to the south of that area. So the, the district team decided at that point to just pull that portion of the, of the project so they could sort those issues out um, and not hold up the rest of the project. And so the time is now. We're, we're back uh, to, to talk about that, that part of the, the overall project. And, and certainly the applicant team can elaborate if they need um, on the conversations that they've had with neighbors. And it looks like we have a couple neighbors here tonight who filled out cards. And so it sounds like you'll hear from them as well. So we'll get, we'll get the whole story. Um, in, in general, I guess my understanding uh, of things, and here's a little bit zoomed in area of the, of the current tennis courts, so there are three of them, kind of more or less at the, the intersection of 25th Avenue and Willard Street, just across from what will be the, the new parking lot where the softball field was and very near to the, the academic classroom building. And in general, there were some concerns about um, kind of what 25th Avenue would look like, uh, about um, maybe just the location of driveways in relation to some of the, the residential driveways that are there. And again, I think the district team or some of the folks who are going to testify can explain about that. But my, my sense in general uh, is that those issues have been worked out. We'll, we'll hear for sure this evening. We didn't receive any other comments uh, on the application to date. So. Um, so again, here's just a little bit more of the, the project area. The view from the street, uh, currently the tennis courts are not are not lighted. On 25th Avenue, there is head-in parking uh, between 14 and 16 spaces. In addition, there are about 10 spaces that are on, if we look back, that are actually on the, the property as well. The proposal uh, is to wipe off the tennis courts and just have it be an off-street parking lot with 30 spaces. So kind of a net change of positive 20 f for the site itself. However, uh, on 25th, if I have my cursor working here, uh, on this side, the east side of 25th, there would be no parking on the street. Uh, there's a little, uh, whatever the opposite of bump out is, a bump in indentation for a couple of parallel parking spaces on 25th as well. So, um, there, you know, there, there definitely will be some changes in the in the streetscape on 25th. It will look much more like a, a street with an actual kind of cul-de-sac bulb at the end. Here's a driveway for the existing condominium properties that are just to the south. This is a driveway for the Northwest Housing Alternatives. Um, site, which is also currently under construction. I think they're getting close to being done with uh, three apartment buildings, their office building, and a shelter building. So uh, that that parking lot does have uh, one entrance and exit here on 25th and another one on Willard as well. So um, the proposal with this design is to have one-way circulation through the parking lot. So you can see in this case, uh, we have some angled, I think maybe 45 degree angled parking spaces with the entrance coming on Willard Street, circulating through with parking opportunities along the way, and then exit only with the ability to turn either direction onto 25th, but exit only onto 25th uh, here close to the intersection of 25th and Willard. Um, the proposed alignment of this exit is more or less in line with a, there's one residential property remaining on the corner, the opposite corner of 25th and Willard and this driveway exit would line up more or less with that. Uh, so as part of the design, they're providing the required um, on-site pedestrian walkways, uh, lighting to the minimum level to, to provide safety in the parking lot and landscaping around the perimeter and also in the interior. The, um, and there have been a couple of, of minor conditions imposed to, to make sure that those standards are met, that the, the current plans are, are revised as needed to make sure that we're getting the proper spacing of trees and uh, demonstration of the lighting levels and whatnot. The one issue that did pop up kind of late in this process is one that was due uh, in large part to staff just being a little off track for most of the way with respect to how we were talking with the applicant about the spacing requirements for driveways uh, with respect to the intersection of 25th and Willard. So somehow we got in our minds that the minimum requirement was 45 feet. Uh, it turns out that the actual requirement is 100 feet. So the idea is that both driveways technically should be at least 100 feet away from the intersection. And, and a large part of that reasoning is to prevent queuing problems if folks are somehow waiting a little bit to get into the parking lot that we don't have traffic backing up and blocking the intersection from, from either way. Um, 
in the case of Willard Street, the proposed driveway is fairly close to meeting that standard. It's it's maybe 10 to 12 or 15 feet under. And in conversation with the applicant's uh, team, it sounds like there's not an issue with shifting this driveway just a little bit farther so that um, so that it meets the 100 foot spacing standard. Um, and w without really impacting the, the design or, or circulation of the parking area there. In the case of the driveway on 45th, um, you know, we've, we have had multiple conversations with the applicant team along the way about, you know, with this 45 foot standard in mind. So there's been a lot of, a lot of time and uh, design work put into uh, providing a driveway here at this location, uh, including with what we think works pretty well, the one way system. And so, um, requiring this driveway to shift at this point to meet the 100 foot standard it would have to move farther to the south and that would create some um, some changes and some problems with how, how it's been set up here in terms of the circulation uh, there's some question about whether we'd end up with a little bit of dead space or maybe lose some parking spaces in general um, also as I understand it one of the the concerns from some of the neighbors to the south was not having a driveway too close to their existing driveway here and so um, this current location is proposed to be about 50 feet from the intersection and and the assessment of our our engineering staff was that uh, given the way the parking lot itself will provide some queuing so that if folks are waiting to get out since they cannot folks can't come in here there will be actually some on-site queuing provided by this configuration so that reduces some of the conflicts that you might see and that in general because this is a dead-end street even with some of the other um, driveways here that we just don't anticipate that being a, a queuing problem so at you know kind of in pulling the materials together we realized that the, there was a need to um, kind of request a variance from that standard and we provided some uh, findings in um, in our recommendation in support of that in terms of considering some of the, the public benefits from some of the things I've talked about with respect to spacing and some of the neighbor concerns and whatnot so that was the the one wrinkle that came up with this and uh, as I noted we've addressed that the variance criteria in in the findings that we have the larger question of the major modification to the community service use uh, it has the standard criteria that I think many of you by now are, are fairly used to considering with respect to some of the new or modified CSUs that we have they have to do with um, how the proposal meets the standards of the underlying zone um, looking at the level or the scale the nature of the of the operation and how it might fit with respect to compatibility with the surrounding area um, thinking about whether there are impacts or what what the public benefits might be to to the proposal and so our assessment um of this was that um that in general it, it it's a it's a fine location for a parking lot um it's close to the the rest of the school campus the the academic building um and including for some of the the remaining athletic fields the the track and the football field uh, it serves the purpose of providing more off-street parking for the school which continues to be technically under parked they're not providing enough spaces uh, as required by the code and um, over time with the project they've been doing they've been getting closer and closer to meeting that standard uh, so uh, with the proposed parking addition here they're they're fairly close to meeting the standard and so so there is some benefit to providing additional spaces to get closer to, to that compliance with the code. Um, I guess the, in this case, again, the a key issue was for us was are there any impacts resulting from this proposal that need any kind of special mitigation? And our assessment was, again, that um, with the exception of the, those couple minor conditions, we suggested to make sure that the, the proposal meets the actual requirements in terms of uh, spacing of the perimeter landscaping trees, um, making sure the lighting levels you know, eliminate any trespass onto adjacent residential properties that uh, it didn't really seem to us that there were any other impacts uh, to be uh, mitigated for in this in this case so um, so our recommendation was for approval of, of the project and the CSU and including uh, allowing the that reduced spacing of the 25th Avenue driveway so our suggestion is for recommending recommending uh, approval of the findings and conditions as we presented them so with that I guess I will uh, you have the standard set of uh, options here we have uh, sufficient time on the land use clock that if you feel like there's a lot more information to be gathered or you need a continuance that we have time for that but with that I'll ask if you have any questions any questions 
Mr. Yeah, I, yeah, I have some questions and bear with me. I know that this is a long-term project and I've only been the planning commission for three months, so you may have covered this ground before, but uh, so I, I think what I heard you say was that this, uh, these 30 parking spots would get them more in line with the parking requirements. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, who are these parking spots for? Are they for faculty, staff of the high school? That I may have to have you ask the applicant. That's fine. Applicant, I, I, you know, we can you. defer that to you know to someone who can answer more appropriately. I don't know if they'll be specially designated, um, yeah. but that, that's a that's a fair question. And so, will they? Uh, will the parking spots be designated for a certain period of time, like during school hours, and will they be open to the public, other than the, those school hours? Also, I think a fair okay. question. Okay, we're that. going to kick can. a few cans here. That's fine. <laughs> um, and, uh, well, yeah, I don't know if one question in general might be, will this parking lot be any different than the other parking lots that are on the school campus? Sure, sure, there are, sure, there are several sure. Of them. sure. Um, so um, I'll preface my next question with the observation that I don't go by this uh, these tennis courts every day, but I go by maybe once a week, once every 10 days, and I don't think I've ever seen anyone playing tennis on the, on the courts. But um, does the school have... Uh, physical education courses on these courts. Uh, again, a question that might be good for the applicant team. But, sure, but you do sure. remind me that um, one part of the the larger project um, that was discussed before you're on the commission, um, there have, have already there's already been a a replacement, I guess, of the tennis courts provided at Rao Middle at School, Rau, so a little which farther is about down, a quarter of a mile down Lake, I right. think. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, does the school have a varsity tennis team? I believe they do. Okay. Again, again, that that would be one that you can confirm with that. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and they're winning. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good. That's great. <laughs> that's all I have at this point. <laughs> no questions. No questions. Any questions over here? No. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, have we received any correspondence on this matter other than those included in the meeting packet? No. Um, then next we'll take comments from the applicant or the representative and please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, members of the commission. For the record, my name is Andrew Tull. I work for 3J Consulting. We're at 5075 Southwest Griffith Drive, Suite 150 in Beaverton, Oregon, 97007. I want to thank you for your time tonight. I do have the Blazer score, but I will not reveal it. Uh, <laughs> um, so thank definitely you. want to thank you for your time tonight. Also want to thank staff. As usual, Brett does a great job of putting applications together, and we really appreciate his help with this one in particular. Uh, I would like to mention, I, I only have just a few brief comments. We are fully in support of staff's uh, recommendation for approval. We accept the staff report as written and all proposed conditions of approval. I will mention that this site was um, a little bit of a collaborative design effort in that we came in with one proposal. We sat down with engineering and planning staff at the city, redesigned the whole site, and we liked it a lot better. I think hopefully we'll hear that our, our neighbors are in favor of the site plan as well. We certainly re reached out and tried to meet with them to make sure that uh, we were putting our best foot forward in this case. Um, just to answer a couple of the questions that came up, uh, this parking lot will be available to students and faculty. Um, it will be open to the public as most of the, the property that the district owns, the, the public sometimes does park on. Um, not encouraged, but it, it may happen. Um, the tennis courts have been moved down to Rao Middle School, and there is a very active and perhaps championship caliber tennis team um, out there playing on them now at, at Rao. Um, with that, I have nothing else to add to the record. Again, I think Brett did an excellent job giving an overview of the project, and we would seek your approval tonight. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? No. No, thanks. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, I'm going to take public testimony. I've got uh, two comment cards here. Um, one is marked as neutral and the other marked as to ask a question, so I'll interpret that as neutral as well. Um, so no testimony specifically in support of or specifically opposed to the application for the neutral testimony. Um, first, I'll call Siri Bernard. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you for your time. Siri Bernard, 2437 Southeast Lake Road. 
And, and I'm Wanda Walker. Address is 2441 South okay. Lake Road. Yes. Tennis court. Yeah, so we are the neighbors right next to it. Um, first of all, I want to say that uh, Andrew and all of those guys have been great to work with. I, I really appreciate that. And there were some real real problems to begin with and they were all over it and I that's wonderful so the kinds of things that we're talking about is more I don't know the human part of this um, <clears throat> so first of all there has been the school has said well we'll try and make it for staff and they can't promise that. Also, we know that on the weekends, that is the parking place for people who take the max. You know, so there's always going to be cars there and whatnot. Um, we, as, as she said, we live right on the other side of it. So we're going from where kids were playing and everything to now there's car carbon dioxide and all of those things and we'd like to mitigate that kind of thing. We'd like to propose maybe a fence that, you know, maybe a good neighbor eight foot fence that would keep a lot of that out. And if there's kids there, love them to death, but they are high school kids and they like to practice new language for them and they like to do things that they can't do at home. So the fence would provide a barrier for that also. Um, so. And I would just say too, um, I know there was talk of like maybe just a cyclone fence. Sorry, can you, can you speak just a little closer to the microphone? Yeah. Um, I know that there was talk about just putting up a cyclone fence because they're gonna have to take down my existing fence. And I was explained, um, explaining that I'm a really private person. And if, and I know they have to take my fence down, but I understand that they can also put up a temporary one before the other one's built. Because I don't want my backyard exposed to the parking lot, you know, and look out on my patio to see cars. Um, so if I, you know, that would be my recommendation. And me having asthma really bad too. So um, <clears throat> all the exhaust, the coming, the goings, I think wood would be the way to go. That's what I have there now. Um, as well as um, security too is huge for me. As Siri, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Because um, we're just right there. We're just yeah, gonna right be right there. there at the cul-de-sac. And we're talking about 10 feet between I, yeah. the cars and our back door. So safety is huge, you know, along with privacy. And um, so I would also request that I could have a, a wood gate with the lock too. So I don't have people, I don't know, just, it just makes me just honestly just a little uncomfortable um, being alone. <laughs> I just uh, think that that would be something that would be a great idea. So what we're asking for is a, a, a real fence, fence a, a real. good neighbor fence, and eight feet tall because of the it, way the properties are. And I do have, my fence is eight foot right now and it's been nice because yes there is tennis players there however I might just maybe see the top of their head and um, my dog gets a lot of the tennis balls he's so happy about that he's gonna miss them <laughs> uh, yeah so the other question I kind of had about this parking too is what about the school buses where are they gonna are they usually come down that street there is somewhere else now. okay good because <clears throat> we like to get out <laughs> so that's it okay um, so is there any questions? Yeah, thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions? Um, Just to clarify, you say good neighbor fence. I hear you saying no cyclone, but I hear you saying what then? I'm just, you know, because I have a wood fence now that's eight foot. A good neighbor. So something fence. opaque. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you have a question? Can yeah, I, I thought you said you wanted a gate. With well, that's gate, an addition to the fence. Because yeah, the... The fence is will be right now like it's alongside of the tennis court, but I also have a gate there that they have to come down. Um, it won't it won't handle the demolition, it, you know. If they go to take it all down, that that will definitely come down too. So, 
That's really important to me to have. You, but you, do you want a gate from your property to the parking lot? That we all would, have a gate from mm -hmm. our property to okay. the parking so lot. So that would, but but she's, she, you know, a sideways one would be okay too. Yeah, but know. yeah, just so because I can go out, I go out that way to go to my garage, which is okay. Understood. Yeah. Is the fence coming down because it's over a property line or? No, it's uh, it just won't handle the demolition of the tennis courts. Yeah. It would probably fall. <laughs> the, the tennis courts right now are are. Our, on one next to our property, it's a big cement kind of what, <coughs> fortress. Is that the right word? And it's it's probably okay. You know, five feet tall, we'll, and we'll so they're going to have to take all that down. We'll pull a Google um, image up from uh, yeah. Google Maps Street Viewer. They're playing tennis on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, right. There's yeah. a lot in of the, people in, playing tennis. In Google View or Street Viewer. Yeah. And not just, uh, Sorry. Sorry. it's not just the school. There's a lot of people that play tennis yeah. there. But as yeah. they said, well, they'll go to route. So while, while, while Brett is pulling this up, if you could describe, I'm, it, it's a little confusing to me that if it, this is you, your fence on your property line that, and it's that. being removed. Because actually where the fen my fence is, the school property is there's a little um, gap kind so of thing. Can't get they're, it just from gonna, the way. they're just gonna. They're just gonna. Yeah. Need to go in there. Oh. I don't know that I can so, go anywhere. Yeah. So has has the applicant? Have you discussed with the applicant a replacement of the fence as mitigation? Is that something they've offered or you've you've requested? In, they offered a cyclone. They, yeah, they, they I, offered a cyclone fence. But I, you know, I just would really prefer. But we need more privacy. Have, yeah. Has there been any type of survey on the record that demonstrates or, or what the, the fence is on your side yes. of the property line? There has been, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and my okay, fence we'll have is the, right on my property. Okay. Well, I'm sure the applicant will have a. a, a oh, there some, you go. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Close, yeah. Close. yeah, yeah. And and you are the property owners. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. so this is, um, this is a 55 Whoa. and older walk, condominium. Walkway, uh huh. Through a, okay. a gate to get to my back sure. door. All right. Yeah. You just can't quite see it, but that's real close. Yes. Right. <clears throat> oh, there's my little umbrella. <laughs> okay, and that's your fence, right? Uh, yes. Looks a little better on my side, I'll have you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's, that's your yeah. backyard right there. Yeah. Can you use the cursor to, what, where is the fence? I don't know. I can't. There we go. There's, there's the cyclone for the court, and then her fence is right up next to it. Okay. And they uh, feel they need to take it down in order to, of course, they have to take down that big wall and... You know, make that level. Yeah. Make the whole thing level, yeah. You can't there's, see uh, so. the tennis court cyclone there next to mine, but it, it is. So they just want to put a cyclone, and we want them to put up a yeah. solid fence, as you yeah. said. Okay. okay. Yeah. No questions. Yeah, no, no further questions? God, it's it. We appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So um, are there any other questions in general on the, the application that we'd want to ask, or should we move on to the rebuttal from the, uh, give the applicant the opportunity for rebuttal? Move on. On to rebuttal. Um, does the applicant have any rebuttal or additional comments in response to the public testimony? We do. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, and to my right, I've invited Steve Nichols, the project manager for the Milwaukee High School construction project to join me. Um, I think we may have just a little misunderstanding and some confusion about what's being proposed. Um, firstly, I will talk about um, parking and carbon dioxide. As you can see from the aerial images that um, are on screen now, I mean, this site is paved basically 100% of the, the way. This is going to be very nicely landscaped after we're done. Um, so I think there's actually going to be some offset um, of carbon dioxide emissions happening because of the landscaping that we're putting in. Um, 
Steve, would you like to talk specifically about the fencing? And I'm not sure if we need to have Steve give his name and address for the record. I think it wouldn't hurt. I think it's better to get it in the record. Yeah, my name is Steve Nicholas. Uh, you want my residence? Uh, your your address of record. I think your that it's business record. It's three one zero Southeast Morning Sun Court, Clackamas, Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the fence that we're discussing. Uh, can we pull up the, the survey? Uh, I'm not sure. Is it plan set? Give yeah. me a minute, I can. Sorry, I'm sorry to keep it closed. The, uh, we did have a survey done uh, of the property. And the, the fence that we're talking about is partly on the district property and, and, and partly on, on their property. So we're assuming at this point it's their fence. Unfortunately, when we do the demolition of, of, of the uh, tennis courts, that fence will not survive, okay? And uh, in the discussions that I've had with uh, Wendy and Siri and uh, a couple of other individuals that live in that, that area, the district has offered uh, to replace the fence with a like fence. However, uh, if if it's a condition of, of the of the land use, uh, the district standard is a cyclone fence. This is where I think the confusion is. The district is willing, uh, and the discussion has been with with the condominium uh, folks, is that the district will will build this fence for them on their property, but we have we will have an agreement that they maintain it. Okay. And so we're more than willing to uh, create the fence as a privacy. Uh, we understand, uh, you know, that that is needed, and the district has has agreed to do that. Uh, we are working with their attorney to draft uh, such a document, uh, agreement of, of maintenance. So there's actually two documents. One uh, is currently being drafted to allow us to be on their property to uh, remove the fence uh, because it is on their property. Uh, I've taken a lot of photographs of the area so that we know how to replace, re replace it back to how it is currently. And that's the, the intent uh, of what we would like to do. Uh, this is the survey uh, here. Blow this up. Steve, yeah. right. hang on one oh, second. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, sorry. If I blow it up, it's going to get a little wonky, yeah. but I can do I can do it. That's pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. As you can see, uh, the fence isn't completely straight. The dashed line is the uh, property line, and if it's blown up a little bit bigger, you can see that it kind of deviates. Uh, the property is odd shaped. The chain link fence here is where the tennis courts are, but the reality, this little sliver of property is actually the districts. This right here. This planter has been built by the condominium complex, which will need to be removed. They, they understand that. Okay. And we, we will do that as part of the demolition. Uh, the contractor will pay the contractor to remove it so they don't have the means to remove it. So again, we're, we'll replace the fence. There is, there is a gate right here. Uh, it will not survive the demolition. The retaining wall that, uh, that Siri was talking about is right here. And it's not five feet, it's more like about two, two feet. No. <laughs> So, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, when we pull that retaining wall out, uh, we'll saw cut the asphalt here so that we'll have a clean removal and then we'll repair patch uh, to bring it back. And also the agreement is to replace this fence or this gate here so that they have their privacy. Right? Thank you. No problem. That's all we want to see in the writing. We just want to see the... I don't know, can I talk? Uh, we, we aren't able to take comments without being on the microphone. I'm sorry. Um, I, I would suggest that if the neighbors have heard um, that they and, and have confidence that um, what they're asking for is in fact going to be delivered, 
Um, I'd be more than happy to cede some of my rebuttal time to allow them to come back up if it's the pleasure of the chair. If it's out of pro process, we don't have to do that. But um, I think the district's intent is to work with these folks yeah. and do our best to work with them. If you feel like you need to add an additional condition of approval um, to require that of the district, we would be willing to, to look at some language. But um, I, think, I think our intent is more than clear. Um, and if you are in favor of uh, approving the application as, as suggested by staff, we can certainly make sure this happens as we go forward. I, yeah, I, I think it's very generous to offer time to the, um, the, um, <laughs> the folks who are testifying here today. I think it would be a little bit out of, out of process, but I think the offer is very generous. I'm sure they appreciate that. Um, do we have questions or com um, in response to the rebuttal? You had asked about the use of the of the courts. Yes. Uh, currently, they are being used by the tennis teams uh, to practice on. Uh, the competition is being held elsewhere at other schools, as I understand it. Uh, the intent is that after the season is over for tennis then officially they'll be moved to Rao. Because Rao's, park is, Rao's tennis courts right now are, are a temporary parking lot and a lay down for that contractor. So once again, once it's about May, middle of May when, when the season ends for the tennis players, then that, that court or those courts at Rao will be converted for competition for next season. Okay, thank you. You bet. I have a question. Is the survey accurate? So there is a 10 foot tall chain link fence and then an eight foot tall wood fence today. Correct. Correct. So the wood fence is, and the, that is what we're having replaced. Correct. Yeah. Got it. Correct. The 10 foot fence. Yeah. And, and, and again, really. the right. planner uh, needs to be removed because we're going to build or the district, sure. the sure. plan is to build right to the property line. Okay. Got it. Of course, with the proper landscaping and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. you know, I, I just have a comment. I think that the, all the intentions are good here. I guess my question is, is that, you know, um, how do we make sure that this happens? Mm -hmm. I, I think we can get that um, during our deliberations. Very good. Thank you. about conditioning Thank to you. make sure that this happens. Thank you. Good segue. Okay. <laughs> so with that, um, the public testimony portion of this hearing on file CSU-2019-002 is now closed. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, is the commission ready for discussion? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you want to, I think you could, you could start, Commissioner Massey. I think you had a good Well, standard. I just want to make sure, I think the intentions are good. I have no doubt that all of this is going to happen, but I just kind of want to make sure that we have the language that, that, that holds everyone uh, the expectations that, that, that what we discussed will in fact happen. Yeah. Are there any other elements of the application that um, you have no. thoughts on? It's, no. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Um, I think I'd like to see that as part of the conditions uh, for approval. And my only other concern is regarding light trespass, which I think staff report covers. Um, light pre trespass onto adjacent properties seems to be pretty significant. Um, those are my two issues with the project. So you're, you're satisfied that the light trespass has been adequately addressed? That it's being addressed by staff, yes, okay. as a condition. Okay. I'm Commissioner Edge. Um, <clears throat> it feels a little funny to be uh, converting uh, an active use to a parking lot use uh, in the year 2019. But um, I recognize that our code still um, says that they are underparked. And so, um, you know, this is... Uh, you know, it's, uh, it feels counterintuitive, um, you know, with all the work we're doing on the comprehensive plan update and the climate action plan and everything. And, um, but uh, nonetheless, um, it's, you know, entirely consistent with, with code. And so, um, you know, I think that uh, as conditioned, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's worth approving. Um, I, would, uh, I would agree to add a condition to replace the fence with an in-kind uh, fence uh, using the applicant's words. Um, and it sounds like that would be satisfactory to, to all the parties that are um, discussing that. And so, um, yeah, with that extra condition, I'd be uh, more than happy to approve it tonight. Very good. Commissioner Argo? 
I appreciate your comments, uh, Commissioner Edge. Um, and I, I, I also agree, something memorialized that uh, ensures that uh, provision for the fence is what I would expect to. Otherwise, I would accept um, the recommendation by staff Great. with that condition. Yeah. Yeah, and I uh, really want to thank the applicant for the collaborative process, the fact that the neighbors were um, you know, really willing to um, give you accolades for the process. I'm grateful for the district and the consulting team who supports the district that you've done such a well-run process, and I really appreciate the public testimony, and I'm glad to hear that um, it, it, the process worked well for you. Um, Commissioner Edge, I, I think it's appropriate that you drew attention to the conversion of the active use to parking. I think it would be remiss for us not to discuss that and draw attention to it. Um, it's a, a, and I, I also agree that you know it makes it makes sense in this case to make the conversion, but we should always pause and ask yourself, um, or, or is this consistent with with our vision? Um, I, I personally walk by here pretty regularly, and it's it's very very hot. Everything's paved, and there aren't a lot of trees, and so I am kind of hopeful that bringing in the landscaping um, will maybe be a, a, a net positive in terms of the carbon reduction and shading the area and allowing a little bit more infiltration than the tennis courts do. So that gives me a little bit of solace in terms of the conversion of the, the use here. Um, I also agree that getting a condition in place to ensure that the fence is built um, in kind is completely appropriate and a prudent thing for us to do. Um, so any parting thoughts or uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Do we Can have I a offer a condition for you? Please do. And okay. <laughs> I'm, gonna look, I'm gonna look at Andrew afterwards, after I read this. The school district shall provide a wooden fence and a gate to replace the eight foot tall fence and gate that will be removed for the parking lot construction. Does that sound right? That sounds fine to us. <clears throat> as long as it's a, a solid or good neighbor or whatever they call that. So we, we had a, he said, oh, yeah. There's a, re a request from the audience that the fence would be considered a good a good neighbor fence, if that okay. would be. Provide a, a good neighbor, a, a wooden a good visual, neighbor a fence. A fence with visual screen or that provides a. Sight obscuring. There you go. Sight obscuring. I'm not exactly obscuring. sure what a good neighbor fence is. I thought the. Opaque. But sight obscuring does it. We don't want to have to define yeah. it. Yeah. Sight obscuring. How about. We'll just try to be wooden, specific. Wooden <laughs> opaque fence. Work. Okay. <coughs> so, would someone like to make a motion? Mm. No, we're looking. Well, and I think just I guess an observation is that it sounds like the existing fence is eight feet tall. The current code uh, allows fences only up to six feet tall. You it you need a type two variance to go to eight feet. So I guess just to clarify, is the consideration this is an existing non-conforming fence that's just going to be replaced as it is, so still to the eight foot level without needing a separate variance process. That that's the way I think staff is going to interpret it. You guys can make whatever acknowledgement to that that you you might, but you basically treat it like it's not <laughs> it's, a new fence. It's it's just, th that was my expectation okay. as well. Could it's you reread the condition, please? We're replacing a non-conforming fence with, an, with a non-conforming another non-conforming non fence. fence. Yeah. yeah. Could you reread the condition, please? Um, the school district shall provide a wooden opaque fence and a gate to replace the eight foot tall fence and gate that will be removed for the parking lot construction. Um, I can add eight foot into the into this if everyone thinks it's necessary. I think it helps to be intentional. Okay. I also like the term sight obscuring. Okay. I, I would we prefer sight obscuring too. as well. Okay, I've got the school district shall provide an eight foot wooden sight obscuring fence and a gate to replace the eight foot tall fence and gate that will be removed for the parking lot construction. And the gate is just a personnel that I'm gate? I'm gonna let them work that one out. That was kind of what I was thinking. 
pen, <laughs> yeah, perhaps pen. <laughs> this is dependent upon the applicant and the property owners signing a legal agreement. And so I don't know if we want to put that into the condition. Well, that, well that, I think the applicant, I think the property owners have a whole lot of control over this because they need to grant that, they need to sign that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, they've, they've got some control here okay. to protect themselves. Can I just clarify, I guess, that we're talking about replacing the existing... Neighbors, that's what I meant. Existing wood fence where it is. So we're not talking about adding any new fencing. So wherever there's fence now, that's where it would be. We're not... There's no extension. Okay. Okay. And I'm, I'll also clarify that I think the, the place I will put this condition would be... Uh, I'd make a 1E, condition 1E. That's the... Condition 1 is the grouping where I've said that kind of when they submit the plans for development review, what different adjustments need to be made to the different plans. And I guess I was thinking that might be a place, actually maybe it goes under two, just as something that make, is done, we make sure is done, actually. So I'm gonna say it maybe goes in the group two, number two conditions, things that have to be done before the final inspection. Because yeah. I guess it's not necessarily the kind of thing you show. That seems appropriate. Okay, and then I think we need to actually just put a little hook in the findings. Um, to set this condition up, because we need to have a basis for making the condition, and I'm going to suggest that uh, finding 9D is, that's the con community service use portion of the findings, and D in particular is the approval criteria is the public benefits are greater than negative impacts, if any, on the neighborhood, and I guess I'd suggest that maybe staff, if we give staff the license to just write a little something that says uh, to protect neighbor, adjacent neighbor. I would just neighbor. say in response to, um, uh, neighbor testimony at the hearing. Um, yeah, uh, it was Conditions. determined that a condition okay. should be added that says. Yeah, but I'll I'll just I'll, I'll write that into yeah. that part of it. Yeah. I think. Okay. So I'll make a motion that with that uh, additional finding and the uh, additional condition of approval um, as read into the record by Denny that um, we approve file CSU-2019-002 um, with all of the other uh, recommended um, findings and conditions of approval uh, from staff. I second that. Will all those in favor say? say aye. 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 No opposed. So with that, um, conditional use CSU-2019-002 is approved with the findings and conditions as read into the record. Thanks, All right. folks. If anyone wishes to appeal this decision to city council, you must make applications stating the grounds for your appeal within 15 days of the mailing notice of the decision. Please see planning staff for details. That's fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks folks. Um, and with that, we will move on to um, agenda item six, work session items. I, I have one. One work session item. Yeah. See if you guys are really basketball fans or not. How many questions you asked about this? Ooh, hillside. I'm not used to seeing you with so much facial hair, and it's kind of throwing me off. <laughs> it's not going to stick around that. Uh, it's a good look, Denny. Uh, he can do it quickly. Seeing, um, me with so much. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot more going on, too. <laughs> Touche. Um, so, uh, these four, three site plans that I just handed out are hot off the presses from uh, the architects working on the Hillside Manor plan that um, is a county project to redevelop Hillside Manor up on, uh, um, off of 32nd north of Harrison. And the county received a, a metro grant to to work on the to develop a, a plan there, and we are we staff city staff has been involved in this process, but it's basically a county project, and the intent is to um, basically build quite a few new housing units on that site. I. Wish I had 
the homework to remember how many existing units there were um, in the individual, the existing individual units there. Um, but I think that the tower will remain that's there, and I believe there's 100 units in that, and then there's probably another 100 plus units out on the, in the grounds there. Um, the proposal that will likely come before the Planning Commission and the Council will be for a zone change that would allow for up to 615 units and some commercial uses mm -hmm. along um, 32nd. The three site plans that I've distributed to you are going to be the subject of an open house being held May 30th at the hospital, and there'll be some uh, public notice related to that, that the, the county is going to hold that, that meeting and take additional input, and then um, meet with the city council and meet with the county commissioners and come up with a final um, site plan out of these three. Um, that site plan will then be part of a plan development application that the Planning Commission will review uh, as a preliminary plan. The Planning Commission is the review body for that. Following that, um, the county will, after assuming they receive approval from you, they will go back and prepare a final um, plan development plan that gets that basically will fix um, any standards that are needed for this development. When that process happens, it will be accompanied by the zone change that will um, adjust the density and perhaps the first phase of a subdivision. So they, they intend to um, divide off different parcels here. So each block will essentially potentially be a separate parcel and the county wants the flexibility to sell a f one or two of those for private development to have funding to be able to build um, other parts of the project. So that's kind of the, the big overview. Um, these three um, diagrams have slightly different mixes of, of housing types. The number of housing types are the same. They have sort of a decreasing number of um, parking spaces when you go through the three and an increasing amount of open space that's there. There are other um, features that are uh, uh, built in along with uh, uh, a shared bike path coming from a shared uh, um, Greenway, 29th as it comes down into this site is considered a greenway street. So this would continue the greenway down and then this site come through this site, potentially go through the Murphy site below or come out to 32nd and then in a, in, in a uh, bike system down 32nd to get across that and eventually down to railroad. So um, this is a key property. They've been thinking about those connections and I think they've done a pretty good, pretty good job of it. Um, anyway, I did, this is just informational only. Um, if you had any questions, I could try to answer them, but I'm not an expert on any one of these three site, three, mass, three plans. I saw them all for the first time this morning. Okay. So Denny, you said that the, uh, the intention of the county was to uh, have some private development to seed fund the other developments? Yeah. So the other development's going to be some sort of uh, it, low it, income, rent controlled. What? What? What's? I think it's. I think they're thinking about a mix of income levels. Okay. Um, I know in the third version, the there are some units that are on the west side of 29th. They were thinking about those as ownership units, town townhome, okay. row house kind of mm -hmm. ownership units. The. Um, the initial thinking is that the block block A, each of these are labeled A, B, C, D, E. Um, block A is the is the lot that they think they would sell off first. It is the first lot that would be subdivided off from the rest of this. So it would. 
I, I'm not sure what the phasing will be at this point. They don't have it all sorted out. But I would I would expect they, they don't they won't move everyone off the site initially. They'll build in phases. They'll move um, they're going to try to do this in a staged way that causes the least amount of disruption for the residents that are there. So you, this is this is a 10-year plan, wow. and one of the things you, you I expect you guys are going to see here in the next couple months, not on your calendar yet, is some proposed amendments to our plan development process to allow for a phased plan. We don't have a mechanism to do that. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea here would be create a plan development and then bring in each subdivision phase separately. Um, but always aiming at that overall So it would be like considered like a master plan that is approved, right. but then every preceding application is is still subject to the conditions of like that commission. moment in time. Planning it would be subject to planning commission review for the for the um, subdivision if it's pulling off another block uh, yeah. and improving another block off the off the plan, but it's going to depend a lot on what standards we want to put in place in the plan development itself that might govern some of the design right. issues related to the overall development. So that's the way we're thinking about it right now. Does, has the city thought through any any uh, guidance they would provide in terms of the split of housing typology and you know affordable housing versus market rate versus i mean is have do you had any conversations internally about that well we i should say that um alma flores has been involved in the process to this to this point um she's actually leaving the city i don't know if you guys have heard that but he, no. she'll be leaving in uh beginning of june um but wow. uh she has had some input and worked closely and been one of the steering committee members on this project. Um, but I don't know that this version, I don't think she's reviewed this version or this mix. I think, I think that in the end, um, there's still going to be some discussion about how fixed the development is for each of these blocks. I mean, they still might want a little bit of flexibility in that, and it's gonna, we're going to figure out how that works within the plan development that gets assigned. This overall zoning will set the overall density, but the... Uh, right. But I've had some conversations with community members about concern for the deep displaced mm -hmm. homeowners or... Um, residents. On, residents on the site and real concern about their 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 ability to flexible flexibly find accommodations in the city of Milwaukee otherwise it's I just not the, out there. I think the county is very very aware of that as they go into this process. Okay. So um, there that, and that is the whole concept behind phasing so that they could they could take a couple of these blocks down and not have to move everyone and then people could move into the new units that are built well, if they're affordable right <clears throat> right well they're gonna some of them are going to be i mean right. the whole purpose of doing this project is provide it's the housing authority of the of the county that's doing the project so there is a absolute intent to provide okay. as many affordable units as they can but Great. the overall scope is to provide some mix as well and there's plenty of policy reasons uh, supporting uh, having a mix of uh, yeah. affordabilities in the same place. And so I think this is fantastic. Um, I think it's a great start. Um, and uh, if it's a 10-year plan, I think it needs to be doubly or triply ambitious. Um, and uh, so what I'm wondering about is the zoning that they're targeting and you know what zone designation are they targeting and is there, can they do better? I'm not sure what zone we're, we're going to talk about yet because they're set on it, one number of I mean you know the, the parking you know is different well, from each one but the, the units are the same the balancing act there are there are going to be findings made against the state's transportation rule and some other things as, as we go through this and um, the Harrison 32nd inter intersection is is going to be 
part of that analysis. So, mm -hmm. I mean, at, at this point, I'm in, I'm inclined. I think they need to come in um, and not overzone it in order to justify the the Im improvements or the or where they yeah. might be. There's still a little bit of balancing that will need to go um, into that. It, could the area qualify for a mixed use multimodal? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, like multimodal an MMA? mixed use area. That is a really good question. It possibly could. I mean, there's frequent service yeah. on 32nd. The bikeway we're talking yep. about connecting Springwater to the future, um, you know, railroad um, path. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, really close to the max, obviously, on that, Harrison, so, or you know, that way. That, that's an excellent question, and I hadn't thought of it. So thank you. There will be a DLCD person to talk to on all those fronts. Yeah. What I would assume, because that's their that's their purview. And that this, that would be part of the zone change piece as we go into the plan development. You know, we, the point at which we need to make the the transportation planning rule findings are the zone change. Right. That's down the road a ways. So we would have time to consider whether that needs to be done. Okay, that's that's a good idea. That's the get out of jail. Could you explain a little bit for it's, me about the, the, M, it, the MMA? I it's went the, over my head. It's the get out of jail <laughs> card from the transportation planning rule, which basically says you can't have impacts on a state highway system, negative impacts on the state highway system that aren't otherwise mitigated. So um, the um, it's a it's a planning effort where you would where you would draw a boundary around the district that is part of the MMA and um, it it um, negates the need to address certain aspects of the of the transportation planning rule. Nice. Um, hmm. The only one I mean there's only been a handful of them yeah. approved in the state. Yeah. I was the planner on the first one that was approved in Lake Oswego. But after I left, the, the council that was there undid it. This was down in the, the area down by the, um, um, down by the waterfront. It was going to be the terminus of the, of the, uh, street the street that was yeah, going to hills. extend. Yeah, yeah, that went poop. So I'd love to work on another one. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. I have a feeling the fate would like be a, the fate be a little different. I think on this case, if you could get an MMA compared. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with that. And um, I mean, and so the transportation planning rule um, is a policy, a state, you know, law that um, comes from uh, the 20th century when we were trying to make sure that you know traffic was free flow all the time for everybody that wanted to drive. And um, if you put in, you know, if, if your uh, transportation impact study shows that you're going to have a certain impact and it's going to degrade facilities to, you know, level of service F, then you have to provide uh, mitigation, you know, an upgrade, uh, put in traffic signals, uh, put in extra lanes, overbuild our road network, invite more people to drive. Um, you know, basically it was the net effect. Jo that, Joseph, so. you're overstating the negatives of the transportation rule because it was it was the mechanism in state planning that really linked land use and transportation together and told you you need to think about land use as you think about transportation. And it also was the, the reason there are so many um, design standards that are built into many, many codes around the around the state that um, look at um, pedestrian oriented design so the, those types of requirements have been in place for 20 years now but most of a lot of them um, but they're the genesis is the TPR but I yeah, agree with you it needs a revisit for and it's reasons. being revisited yeah but it's a long, arduous process, and it's DLCDs, not ODOT. We have to do what they tell us to do. Yeah. It's rulemaking. It's part, they are the rulemaking authority for, for the transportation planning I, I, rule. I'd just like to add, I think these designs are really, really exciting, and I'm really, really appreciative of the level of expertise we have on this commission. Yeah, we're gonna, staff, if we're still around on this, exciting. we are going to have a lot of robust conversation. I, this, I think you'll be, I think they're coming 
to the commission in the fall. Sounds good. So, I mean, yeah, if we can, the master plan part of it or the development the master phase, plan. Yeah, we want to be in on this. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate the options that are being shown here. I think they only get better as you get to option three. And I, I love the, the kind of discussion that we're having about multimodal and the, the county, pro, the county director of the housing authority, he likes the third option the best. Oh, yeah, I, I can, I could see some reasons why. So You've been privy to some of this. Yes. Yeah, I've been tracking this, and um, I'm, I'm really excited about seeing it good. come through. Okay, good. Yeah, this is amazing. Excellent. So we get to talk about this more on the 28th. Um, I, no, you won't talk about the... This is just kind of a, a preview of what's coming. Um, this... Uh, you will be looking at the PD code language that talks about the process for... For oh, doing for it. a okay. plan development, I'm clear. that um, is probably in June. We need to get, we need to finalize the draft and do the notices so that we can move okay. to hearing for that. Mm -hmm. That's all I've got. Thanks, Danny. So thank you, thank you, Danny. Yeah, that that covered work session items and planning department, other business updates, um, planning commission committee updates and discussion items, an opportunity to comment or discuss on other items that are not on the agenda. Does anyone have any committee updates or other items? You'll learn about the comp plan next on the twenty first. The twenty first. Okay. At least the housing portion. The, can, can I see your? Agenda? You may. Yes. I guess she'll be recruiting for a new community development director. I, uh, <coughs> Layla Aman, our downtown development yep. manager, is going to be the acting. Oh, good. Um, so maybe she can. Director. Maybe she'd so be a good candidate. She's smart to and knows her Continue stuff. that on. All so right. we'll see. I think we're in pretty good shape. Cool. We're we're going to be stretched in terms of capacity until there's another person mm -hmm. there but um yeah that i think good. there's some smart moves that, that have been sounds made. good um alma's going to work for um reach, reach housing oh, oh okay. that's awesome that's perfect good deal that's great to hear housing development i've got one yeah. item to add um so it's kind of funny to have my second meeting and add this item but so uh, i will have some personal deadlines occurring uh, July 11th. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, my expectation is to continue on and to keep working and see this as an opportunity to get out of the house. So, yes, yeah, sure. my, my deadline is July 11th, <laughs> um, but I'll be at future meetings. That after sounds that. like a veteran. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My folks or were rather, like, by the time my sister. Her deadline is July 11th, and yeah. she's being, yes, yeah. she's. When well, my folks got to number four, they were like that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just so you're aware. I, th I think we would uh, welcome baby wearing during the, the session. Oh, that'd yeah, be got awesome. It. Maybe I think that's something I'd that love we should it. accommodate. I would love that. I would appreciate that. Actually, I do fully intend to be present during those following, you know, the meetings as I can physically and aren't able to able to but i do i appreciate that accommodation that's awesome. just so you're aware sweet um commissioner Ed, you often have updates for us on other goings on oh that's true so i guess may 29th the oak grove lake oswego um bike ped bridge feasibility study advisory committee um will meet for the first time and uh, i was appointed to do that um, excellent from the county uh, oak grove area and uh, denny i believe is also i'm on i'm on the t technical committee you're on the technical yeah. committee yeah okay so you won't be at that. is there a consultant doing that Feasibility uh, study or is it all in-house no it's parametrics parametrics oh yeah i may even know who's doing it okay and then um, next Wednesday, the um, Board of County Commissioners is getting their first report on the uh, Park Avenue um, planning project, uh, phase one. And then on June 11th, they'll decide uh, whether they approve phase two. But everything seems really positive so far. Okay. Other updates? I don't think so. Oh. And the uh, forecast for future meetings? Next time is going to be... A bear. A long evening. Yeah. Bring coffee. Yeah. This is realistic. I mean, it seems like we probably won't be able to get through both of these hearings. And uh, my guess sitting. is that the 
um, that one of them is going to end up being continued. So yeah. is there a 120-day limit? Maybe we should schedule the one with the closer limit first in the evening. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not 100 percent. Let me think about how to schedule it. Uh, we haven't decided what's going to go first yet. Okay. Um, but um, we know the 19th Avenue one has that it will be a, a a long one. The oh, Rock I, States. I would take a, a preliminary motion to extend our next meeting until 10:30 if we want to just get that out of the way up front. I'd like to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss the June 11th meeting um, because okay. that's my birthday, oh, and so happy um, birthday! I'll be doing yeah. other things, I think. Yes, and so, you should. Um, so yeah, if we can get both those done in, in the same night, the day after Memorial Day, is that right? Yeah. Um, yes. Let's, yeah. let's see. What, um, not. We'll see what we can well, do. That, uh, that was the nature of that series of questions. Are, are we going to have a quorum for that night? And it was. Uh, it's a toughie. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, well, that closes the regular meeting of the Milwaukee Planning oh, Commission. Oh, I think we have to move to adjourn. Oh. And I will make, make a, a motion. motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. Second. <laughs> Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 And we're closed. <laughs>